they were at Retro Gaming Fun, a retro gaming store, which you can find online, but they also have a physical store filled with retro gaming goodness. So I know you're all thinking who's gonna be the special guest this week, and it's one of my favorite YouTubers in the whole wide world. I'm so glad he wanted to do this. Hey everybody, Greco Fabulous here, and welcome to yet another exciting episode of Ed's Retro Geek Out? Really? Wow, okay. So you're telling me in the limited amount of time that we have on this planet, like literally it could be game over tomorrow, you'd rather watch that than this? Huh, okay. Is someone going to translate this into Belgium? So today we're over at Retro Gaming Fun, which is a retro gaming store. <laughs> you probably could have guessed that already. I came here to chew bubblegum and find retro games, and I'm all out of bubblegum. Wow. Truly next level stuff here, guys. Finding video games at a video game store? Get out of here. Tune in next week when he finds a Happy Meal at a McDonald's. Oh man. Real hunters go in the wild, you punk. So let's take a look. a couple of really hard to get games right in here. There's some really cool games over here like Wild Gums, like Mega Man 7, but I'm gonna steer away from those games because I don't want to blow my budget on just one game. We are, in the end, we are in a store, so I mean, he's not gonna give it to us for like five bucks, you know? And some N64 games. Oh my god, they even have Conker's Bat for an A right here. And then, of course, loads of NES games. Now, this is amazing. Uh, I hope we have enough time to check it all out. So, let's go, let's go. Right here we got some special editions, some Mega Drive systems in the box, some NES box systems, GameCube, Xbox, Wii, Wii U, all over here. And right here, as you can see, this guy also has a lot of really cool official Nintendo stuff hanging around. Uh, of course, you got PlayStation 3, some PlayStation 1 games, really nicely displayed, and some more Mario stuff. Now, this is amazing. So here we have PlayStation 2 games, some Amiibos, and more of these really cool uh, Nintendo lights. And then here we have some really cool Mega Drive games and of course some Genesis games. SEGA! I'm actually missing this one so hopefully I can take it home but... Now Fantasy Star 3 is a pretty cool RPG on the Mega Drive and Genesis. It's one of the series I actually do collect for. It's the one I'm missing. Is it gonna end up in my maybe pile? I don't know yet, but uh, I'll definitely consider it. I mean, there's so much stuff to look at. There's two retro gaming conventions the store puts on, always at Kalka, and uh, it's in Belgium, of course. Now, the, the next one is gonna be on the 13th of May. And then, have I told you yet about Retro Gaming Dungeon? What if Belgium's biggest retro gaming conventions. This Sunday on the 13th of May, Retro Dungeon is happening 2018. This is one of Belgium's biggest retro gaming conventions. There's gonna be a ton of vendors. I'll be there, so what more reason do you need to come over there, guys? Come on. 
check it out, check out the website, and I'm gonna start digging around here. I, I kinda glide towards the uh, cabinet filled with NES games, and actually find a game I still need, and that is Sky Kid. Always heading right for the NES games. Dude, forget the NES. Pick up a Master System. You'll thank me later. Sky Kid is a shooter. It came from the arcade game of Sky Kid, of course, so this is a port. It's a pretty cool game. I didn't have it yet, and, you know, I might as well add it to the collection. I'm looking at some Game Boy games, and there's actually a Game Boy game I still need. This is a shooter for the Game Boy, and it's called Pop and Twin B. Um, now, these games are probably best known for the SNES versions, and it's a pretty cute shooter, so pretty happy to add this one to the collection. That's one of the games I'll definitely get. Uh, it's not going into maybe pilots. It's going into the I'll definitely buy that one pile. Can we, can we go in here? I, I think we can go in here. It's all good. So there's this other show on YouTube that like the the older game look fours or something like that. And whenever they go to a store, they ask, hey, can we check out the back room? Because that's where the stuff is that they didn't price yet. So I'm thinking, hey, maybe I should use this knowledge and try it over here, over at Gunter's store, because he has a back room. Let's check it out. You know, you learn so much from YouTube videos. It's, it's insane. It's insane. The stuff the amount of useless knowledge I, I accumulate by watching YouTube. <laughs> All right, I don't really know what to say about this one, but uh, so, oh, wait. damn. A floating Mario. It's insane how much stock these guys have. <laughs> Not, nothing happened. You break it, you pay for it, buster. <laughs> yeah, just a ton of stuff. I, I don't really think we need to be back here, especially with all the stuff falling down, but... <laughs> now, on the way back out of the back room, I didn't really find any games over there, but uh, my cameraman sure did find something pretty cool. He found a stack of boxes, NES boxes, so just the cardboard, really. Ed's so into cardboard, he probably pre-ordered the Nintendo Labo. I, I, I've been buying a lot, a lot of Nintendo cardboard lately. Yeah. Um, but over here, there's actually some good ones. I already have the game, so why not? You, there's Silver Surfer in there. You got X-Men. There's a Mega Man 5 in there. There's Ninja Gaiden, Goonies, Ultima, Bart versus the Space Mutants, Dirty Harry. I mean... I can just leave these behind, you know? I remember when I was a kid, I used to get cardboard boxes and pretend that I was somewhere else. Kinda wish I was doing that right now. As I go over to the SNES, I actually find Ninja Warriors over there, but um, it, it's a bit pricey. I, I'm thinking I wanna buy a load of games over here, so I tell my, my camera guy, I tell my friend who, who does the camera work for me, and he goes like, yeah, I'll maybe throw it into my pile. So now we're just going to have a look over at what he bought. He got a great deal over there. Ninja Warriors was in there. Now Ninja Warriors is an SNES beat-em-up game. It's pretty good, but it's also pricey. This is the NTSC one. And it's not too bad. It's not too bad, actually. As I'm going through the stacks of NES games, I'm also seeing loads of pirated games. Now these are some of the bootleg games that didn't really get officially licensed by Nintendo. So they're, they're quirky, you kind of have to decide as a collector, do I want to collect these bootleg carts or these Tengen carts? Tengen actually had some cool ones over there, so I did pick up Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. So as you can see, the Tengen carts look a bit funky. And I also picked up Skull and Crossbones. Now, both of these games aren't very good. It's all right for what it is. I guess these weren't priced as, as, as expensive as the real NES games that were licensed by Nintendo. Oh, I get it. This is one of those channels for poor people. 
Bobos, they make your feet feel fine. Bobos, they cost a dollar ninety-nine. But yeah, I think the priciest one from Tangan is probably the Tetris one. Um, but these two looked cool enough to pick up based on the cover. However, the games aren't as solid as the covers. There's like a big variety in PAL games, but also so many NTSC games. <laughs> Rescue Rangers too. <laughs> so I basically picked out any NES game I have. I, I did not own yet out of the pile of NES games. I made a really big stack and now I'm just looking around. Maybe there's some other stuff I want to add. So this is a Roger Rabbit signed by James Rawl from AVGN. That's pretty sweet. Of course they're not selling this one. Oh my god, I I bought so much crappy NES games because, because of AVGN. I, I remember seeing the movies trying to figure out, hey, <laughs> I'm looking up reviews for good NES games that I can buy, and then you see the Angry Video Game Nerd reviews, and you're like, I know it's a shitty game, but I want the game now. Hey! Hey, Angry Video Game Nerd! I remember that guy. He's the angry have you ever talk about poop a lot? I used to watch the Angry Video Game Nerd a lot with friends, and I think his videos are hilarious. He definitely knows his stuff when it comes to video games, and I love that he just does not give a shit and he'll just say whatever he wants. What am I doing is I'm lactose intolerant. I was looking for this one. I find a nightmare on Elm Street for the NES. So guys and girls, grab your four score because this is a four player, <laughs> because this is a four player NES game that looks nothing like the movie. Uh, I remember when I took my first girlfriend to see a nightmare on Elm Street in theaters. Got a big old bucket of popcorn, cut a hole in the bottom. Okay. I. I think we're gonna need a horror fan to really explain the movie. A Nightmare on Elm Street is such a classic. This movie introduced Freddy Krueger, who is such an important horror icon today. I love that this movie brought a new and interesting kind of fear to the slasher genre. Sleep is something that you can't really live without, so being afraid of dying in your sleep would be pretty terrifying. This movie had some great gore, some awesome characters like Nancy, and some pretty creepy scenes. So it's a pretty awesome movie overall. It, it was a movie you knew about, even as a 90s kid you knew about Nightmare on Elm Street. It was a great movie. A bit gory, but overall it didn't give me too bad of a nightmare. <laughs> You're punching snakes and bats and stuff? That doesn't happen in the movie. It How is this game supposed to be Nightmare on Elm Street? How did they even make... NES games for horror movies that kids couldn't even watch. This is of course one of the LGN games that the video game nerd, the angry video game nerd reviewed, so I got to have it. So we're going through the stack of NES games I've picked out, and the prices aren't bad actually, they're, they're pretty okay. Loads of these games are NTSC games, so I grab as much as I can. So yeah, these are the games I'm gonna pick out. We came together on a fairly good price for these. Um, we're also gonna grab all of these NES boxes, but I, I, I never ask him for a discount, but he just always seems to give you a discount if you take enough games. And that's what keeps people coming back to you, you know? If you're a good seller who knows what they're selling and the prices are fair, then you're gonna have people coming back to you. And that's definitely what this guy does. It's a good price, but I don't think I have enough money. So I'm gonna try my luck a bit further down in the store. So even though this is the stack I'm gonna go for, my wallet is empty. Um, yeah, I gotta try figuring out a way um, to do this. Gunter is already grabbing a, <laughs> a briefcase with some poker chips in there. It seems like he wants to gamble. Now there actually is a gambling system inside the store, so I'm gonna try my luck over there. Gambling is the solution to all your problems. Just ask my dad. In prison. And what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yes! Money! I think we're gonna buy some more stuff. I've been eyeing this one item since I came into the store. It's a toy. It's one of the only toys that's in there and I'm kind of scared to ask how much is this toy? How much is this toy? But it's one of the things you always have to do. Even if you if you think, oh, that's gonna be $300. Don't ask, don't ask. But I ask him and he's like, oh, that toy over there, it's 15 euros. So I'm like, I gotta take it with me. And that's what I do guys. I pick up this X-Men Blackbird jet for 15 euros. It's amazing. I mean, the box is, is, is in great condition, but uh, it, I've, I've de I definitely have worse boxes in my toy collection. 15 euros, about $18 in the US. An X-Men Blackbird jet for 18 bucks? That ain't bad, but do you have a mint and sealed box sentinel? No, uh, no, I, I don't have a, a box sentinel. At least I think it's mint. I can't tell because I can't open the box. But I can open up my box. And did your box come with extra toys in it? It actually comes with a Wolverine. How <laughs> sick is that? <laughs> I don't know which guy this is. This is. Another unidentifiable one, but damn. So glad with this purchase. <laughs> really, Ed? You're gonna put me in a video that doesn't have Transformers? The Blackbird Jet is an iconic vehicle in the cartoon because it's the jet that the X-Men always use when they go on mission and this one actually kind of transforms because you have a shuttle you have an airplane and it turns into a a uh, surveillance a surveillance uh, room also and of course you have some guns they actually still fire all right Ed I did what you asked of me now can you please leave my family alone Okay, so the store isn't only retro games, they have games leading up to the Wii U, PS4 games, they have multiple amiibos hanging out over there, but what they also have is these really cool statues. <laughs> so the store is actually going to expand the area we went to just before now, where all the stock is, they're actually going to turn it into a statue room where you're going to be able to buy all of these DC collectibles. They also have some really cool Killer Instinct ones. Now these aren't on the website yet but if you check out the Facebook you can uh, contact Gunter and uh, it'll definitely help you out and talking about statues the odd thing and like the most wicked thing this guy had was one of those Walmart exclusive Mario's so outside of Walmart you would have Mario a, Mar a really big ass Mario statue uh, to you know get customers to come in and buy Nintendo games and he actually has one uh, it came from the UK that's where he bought it now these are pricey man and you know it it's pretty cool because it's it's limited to only the Walmart stores back in the US so I don't know how many Walmart stores there are but you know it's cool to see one of these in Europe so I definitely had a great time over at retro gaming fun I can't wait to see them <laughs> Can't wait to see him again this week over at the Calcan Burst, over at the Retro Gaming Convention. And uh, yeah, hopefully I'll find some more stuff over there. I want to thank Victoria Linoleum for jumping in with her wisdom about these horror movies. I want to thank Greco Fabulous for being completely willing to do this without any questions asked. Wait, why am I doing this? I have more subscribers than you. I don't need the exposure. Definitely go check out their channels. Rubber Dino Attack! I will see you guys next week on Monday because that's when a new video comes out, guys. Bye! I'm a pretty girl! That's kind of scary. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs>